Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Stay Spy Ascension Mode Miniseries. This is the Ironclad Ascension Mode Level 12. The most impossible game I've ever played in my entire life. Once you hit Ascension Mode 10, the game gets ridiculous and almost unbeatable. It comes down to a pure luck based game where you either get the right synergy cards and relics in the first floor or you lose the right. That's all it comes down to. And I think that's a bit of a bad design choice in my opinion. I, as I've mentioned before in these runs and I'll mention again, I always feel like every run should be winnable if you play perfectly and unfortunately say aspire in ascension mode at least is not that it's the end of discussion there's no oh but you could play better you could think better you could take better no you take what is available when it's available duh and then you get five that's that's your options so don't come to me with slay the spire is balanced when trust me trust me when i say this that the biggest flaw Slayer Spire has right now, the game, that is, uh, I'm pretty sure, deterring a lot of gamers, is the fact that I can't take carnage. It's not good enough. Uh, struggle off is always good. I, I always think struggle is good, but then I take it, and sometimes I get to the point where I'm like, is struggle off really that good? I don't know. Oddly, Smooth Star does nothing, but Talos does a good take that, get rid of that, and um, perfect. Okay, let's go. Okay, question marks. I like question marks. Let's go. Let's go question marks all the way. Uh, curse is all I don't want. Anything else is fine. You can even take HP from me. I wouldn't care. But just don't give me a curse for the love of the Lord. Curses are not fun. Bum bum. Pop that. Pop that. Pop that. Beautiful. In turn. You're taking a little bit of damage here. It's okay. Ba -da -ba -ba. Boom. Uh, block and stack. I'm gonna take a little bit of damage here. No, we're gonna take zero damage here. Let me tell size. Bump and bump. There we go. So, as you can see, I play super fast because. It's difficult, right? Because I play super fast because I know what I'm doing. I know exactly what cards I'm playing. I know exactly which ones I'm prioritizing over other ones. I know when I'm blocking. I know when I'm not blocking. I know who I'm fighting. I've done this enough times. Let me just say that. I've done this enough times to know exactly what I need to do and how to do it. I don't need to think. There's no thinking involved. I do not make mistakes. There's no problem. The only problem is I either get lucky on relics and uh, cards on the first floor. I don't. That's what it comes down to. Slay the Spy at this point is just a did I get the right cards on the right draw or did I not get the right cards on the right draw? That's all. It's as simple as that. It sounds like almost like it's impossible, right? Like how could they make a game where your entire victory rests on whether or not you draw a specific card? I know that's what a lot of you might be thinking. Like you'll be thinking, like I'm over exaggerating. I'm, I'm moaning a lot and stuff. I am moaning a lot. I'm not going to deny this fact. But I'm moaning for good cause. I'm moaning because it's really difficult. <laughs> it's really hard, and not because the game is difficult, but just because essential mode isn't balanced to allow you to win. And that's what it, I think that's what it's supposed to do. Like, let's be honest with each other. Isn't that what Ascension Mode is supposed to do? It's supposed to be a difficult fight. Because if it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. If everyone did it, what would be the point, you know? Ascension Mode has to be hard. And I'm fine with that. I'm absolutely fine with it. I just hate the fact that it's this hard. Because it's really hard, man. Like, Ascension Mode... As I said, once you hit Ascension Mode 10, dude, life just becomes hard on Earth. So this is really shitty taking 20 damage or 70 damage absolutely nothing i could do about that because our boy cleave once again waited the, his entire human life to show up something i'm pretty familiar with is cleaves just never showing up on the first turning in sentinels um i mentioned this in one of my daily ones but i've never actually mentioned it in a uh an essential run but i'm of the opinion that Slay the Spire has a set algorithm that looks at the cards you currently have in hand and then looks at the deck archetype and then gives you the exact enemies and then the card draw in the order required to prevent you from, uh, from winning. I'm 100% convinced that that is the algorithm that Slay the Spire has been made with and uh, very, very, I don't think anyone could persuade me otherwise because I've done enough of these runs to be able to call bullshit when I see it and trust me guys until you've done as many runs as i've done you don't know what you're talking about that's what i'm saying so spot weakness has worked for me before in the past i don't think it's super good specifically but you know as i said it's worked for me in the past so 
We'll do it today. See how it goes. Maybe it works out okay. Who knows? Um, yeah. Maybe you should have popped the explosion potion and just killed them all. But these are like louses, dude. You don't want to waste potions on louses. Once you start wasting potions on louses, you're kind of in a bad place, man. Because louses are not worth your time, energy, or anything. They're just louses, you know? Who's our boss, by the way? Boss up! Oh my god! I'm actually so excited because it's not the fucking Hexagos for the first time today. They might be thinking like, excuse me, what does that matter? It really matters. I fought the Hexagos every single time. <laughs> I fought the Hexagos every single time. Once you fought the same thing every single fucking fight, you, you get a little bit frustrated. You do start getting to the point where you're like, excuse me, game. I, I, I don't want to be that guy, but I think I need to call a little bit of bullshit, you know what I'm saying? So we use that, and we'll use this. And that, I think, was the best way to handle it. Of course, if we could have got Creed next turn instead of this turn, that would have been gorgeous. It's not going to matter much, because we're going to kill them both, but I still would have preferred it to be a perfect than a not-so-perfect. Let's go another cleave. It's going to be good against the boss specifically, and I'm taking it specifically for the boss, which I know is probably not a good idea, right? You should probably not build your deck in correspondence with what boss you're fighting and rather build it with the run you're going to build. But, I have not made it past the first floor at all. Like, at all, at all. So for me right now, I'm kind of very much into the let's try and make our way past the first floor for once in our entire human lives strategy right now, you know? I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit, like, I'm a little bit angry with Slayer Spy right now. I'm trying to get my sweet, sweet revenge, etc, etc. So he's gonna split here or do a billion damage. Okay, he's splitting. Oops. May, I'm, I actually did mess that up. What I should have done, and now that I have time, obviously, to reflect on this, what I should have done, it's actually very simple. I should have simply just, uh, oh, that's actually exactly what I was hoping would happen, by the way. Uh, what I should have done was I should have, uh, used the... The vulnerable potion. But it ended up not mattering. And we got offerings, so n and we got burning blood. So now we actually have a winning one. We actually have a winning one. It's the bronze automaton. He's a... You know what? Let me tell you right now. Okay, you know what the problem with the bronze automaton is? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna let you in all in on a little secret. The bronze automaton is only difficult because... Fuck it. it. Takes your damage. Because of his one attack. He's got one attack he does that hits for 51 damage. 51! Please explain to me how you guys thought that was even remotely balanced. Let's 51. Then do you not think for one second 51 damage was not too much damage? There's no way you can look me in the eye and tell me that you were like, yeah, I think 51's legit. What do you guys think? And everyone was like, at the meeting, because you know, at the Slayer Spire was decided around at the meeting table, I'm 100% 100% convinced about this, and no one will ever deter me from my opinion. And at that meeting table, they're like, we have gathered here today to discuss our game. And someone was like, okay. And they're like, we first need to discuss the glaring problem in the room. They all became German for some reason, I don't know why. I just, I feel like the people who work at uh, Megacrit, they're all German. This is how it is. And they're like, we have this boss. It has three artifacts. And then people are like, okay, what does that matter? Well, I'll tell you what it matters. When you have three artifacts. Um, I don't have powers. Mommy Finance is no drainer, but Waffle's okay. Lee's Waffle. Who is Lee? Who is Lee? Okay, I want to know who the fudge is Lee. Because this is some bullshit. Okay, we're gonna need to. We are moving basic strike. <gasps> Almost removed the wrong base strike. You know, give me a weakness potion. It's it's done me well in the past. Okay. Anyway, um, I was telling a story. Almost a story. I hate this. This this. By the way, this is so frustrating. This is not that bad actually. It's not great. Obviously, we are taking a ton of damage, and uh, it sucks. I will not be fighting the second forms. By the way. Just FYI, in case you guys were wondering, if you were like, Yo, JPG Gaming, what? Are you gonna fight the second? No. But no. But no. No, but don't chicken out. Fight them. Be a man. Listen to me right now. I would rather be a chicken 
and be alive than be a man and be dead. Does that make sense? I think that makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go for true good, and I'll tell you why I'm going to go for true good. You guys might be thinking, why are you going for true good? Let me tell you why I'm going for true good. I actually forgot what I was going to say. Uh, no, I'm going for true good because it's the right thing to do. It doesn't sound very, like, re like a really good reason. Like, it's the right thing to do. What does that even mean? Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is the right thing to do even mean? I think the damage was the right choice here. I'm going to go for damage. Screw it. So I'll take 18 to the face. I'm going to heal 10. So I'm going to take 8. And I can definitely kill this guy next turn. I said I can definitely kill this guy next turn. Thank you. I'm actually going to be a little bit honest with you guys. I wasn't entirely sure if I could kill him. Fuck it. Go for it. Beautiful. We didn't get the relic. I'm lucky. What do you got for me? Pear. I love it. What do we got here? Um, enemies. I, I don't love it. Can we swap out the enemies here? Is there an option where I don't have to fight these guys? I would prefer that option. If I could please speak to someone that gives me the option where I do not have to fight these guys, I would be very happy to take it. Okay. So, the reason I took True Grid is because of status cards. Status cards are every single where in this game. This game's secret middle name that they never told you about was Status Card. Yes. You guys might think I'm making this up as I go, but I'm being serious. Status Card is the name of the negative debuff you get when you try and win status by. Yep, 100% those words. Definitely accurate. Not uh, modified at all to suit my agenda. Okay, I hate you so much, little, little fucking relic girl. You know why? Because you did not die. I needed you to die. Okay, why are you on 10 HP? I don't even understand. Five person is great. Struggle up is great. Beautiful. Let's go. Question mark. I love it. I don't love it. Can I go back in time? Is there a change my I love it option? Because I would love to change that on my I love it option. I'm going to weaken you even though it uses a potion just to potentially save me some HP in the future. Immolation would be great. Immolation would be great. Immolation is great. You did not die. You shall not. Nope, 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 nope. I considered killing you. I want you to know for the rest of your life. That I was one step away from murdering your butt, dude. I was offering here. You know what I'm offering here? Because A, I'm taking 6 damage. And that's lovely. I love taking 6 damage to the face. It feels good. Getting 2 days is a cleave and a thing. Uh, cleave might kill him, so I'm going to go for that. If he doesn't kill him, I use the explosion potion. Hmm. Take 10. How about no? I like the no option. Fair in a bottle. We love it. Uppercut. We love it even more. Let's go. Now, I know what you're thinking. You have a lot of... Uh... You have a lot of stuff in your deck you do not want. You know what? One gold! Give me a one gold. If I click enough times, you think it will give it to me for free? I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I think the answer is no. As much as I don't want to admit it, I think the answer is no. Um, get checks. That's fine. Rest the fuck up, baby. We got a lot of energy, got a lot of HP, got a lot of a lot of things. If we're very lucky, and we try really, really hard, we could potentially make this work. Close down is perfect. Okay. We got rid of two of these stupid pieces of shit artifacts. There's two enemies here. It's a lot of enemies. Try and take out the one with the least HP first. Do not steal immol immolate. Just whatever. Oh my god, the first enemy stole immolate! Do you not know that I needed immolate to win the run? Okay, so we're taking six years very risky. And I'm gonna tell you why it's risky. Because. Um. I can't afford to take nice six. Because this guy hits for 51 freaking damage. Okay, that's why it's risky. He hits for 31. I still think it's too much damage, okay? I know I've said this a thousand times, but it's 51 damage. Like, right now, you will kill me. I want you to understand this. It's not that you might kill me, but you could potentially. You will straight up one-shot my butt. Okay, and I do not like it. 43 damage, okay? Have you guys ever seen that much damage in your human life? I haven't seen that much damage by you or not. That's why I'm asking if you've seen that much damage. Because I ain't seen that much damage. Okay, so we're still alive. On like two. We on eight! 
We're on two. I told you we're on two. So you guys were like, this guy can't count. He just said they're on two, but they are clearly not on two. I mean, he's literally dead next turn, right? He has to be dead. I'm gonna get. I have to get one attack, right, game? Right. Unless I kill myself. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. Do it. But I could have killed myself if I wanted to. I just want you all to know. I know that if I really wanted to, I could have killed myself. I'm gonna take it. Screw it. Give me more HP. More lives up, baby. The more lives up I get, the more potential hits I can just tank. Okay, we got 127 gold, and we got na we got nada. Nada. I hate this floor. I hate this floor. You know why I hate this floor? I'm gonna tell you why I hate this floor. Because I am not ashamed to tell you that I hate this floor. I hate this floor simply because the enemies are too strong, man. Just let me win the game of. Wait, I almost said the wrong thing there. Just let me win, say the spire, man. Is that so much to ask for, man? That's a fine turn. We took, hey, we took zero damage. That's pretty good. Dude, uppercut's so good. I think uppercut could be the best card in our deck. On a scale of one to 10, I think uppercut's like a 40. What is this? Lose, oh my God, no thank you. Oh no, it's a spike boy. I knew it. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it was a spike boy. I looked into my heart and I said, can you trust the spike boy? And I said, no, you can't. I was right. I was right. Look at the spike boy hit me. Why you gotta hit me like that, spike boy? Okay. This is a great turn for metallicize. A great turn for offering. Great turn for the pain. A great turn for an immolate. Strike. Okay, so we need to do 13 damage. He's got six of that stuff. Okay, we need to do... We did it! We are the world's greatest gamers ever was. Okay, so... Who's not boss? Time Lord. So we want DPS for Time Lord. So Blood for Blood's not bad. Don't get me wrong. Blood for Blood's pretty good. And I'll tell you why Blood for Blood's really good. Because we are going to take damage. So Blood for Blood is going to be free. But if we don't take damage, Blood for Blood's going to be pretty much unplayable. But we do take damage from our own offering. So Blood for Blood maximum going to cost a 1. I think it's worth it. Let's go. I don't want to go to a shop. Or do I want to go to question marks? And... It's a late shop. I'll go fish mocks. Oh, I made a critical error. Can I go back in time and change my mind? Oh, uh, do we care about a right? We probably do care about a right. Though we don't have bag of prep. Uh, lose five max HP. We are ninety. We don't care about five max HP. I'm get a card for free. You wouldn't be so generous. We should probably upgrade a DPS card. So, emulate is like our base DPS card we have. Cleave is pretty good. Uh, spot weakness is pretty good. Especially, it's just like it's average at best, right? Flash of Steel is also okay. That's not good. We have. I'm just gonna upgrade Shogun. Uh, none of the cards were good for us. There, we had like nothing to upgrade there. What was I supposed to do again? They gave me no upgrade options. All I could do was take one of these shitty options. I'm gonna upgrade the offering, I guess. I'm sure upgrade offering is better than not upgrade. I'm not fighting an elite, okay? Just let's get that clear right off the bat before we even waste any time here. There's no way. In how I'm fighting an elite. Now, I would love to have killed my boy, the spiky boy. As you see, I try and focus the spiky boys down early because they get spiky. And obviously, spiky, you know, it's not good for us. We don't, we don't, we don't like it. We're very anti spiky boys right now. No. Boom. So, we're taking a ton of damage on this fight. Like, so we're going to lose half our HP guys in this fight. Easy. Easily half our HP. But. This is why we do it. Because now we can go offering. It's beautiful. Then we go shrug it off. It's even more beautiful. Then we go spot weakness. It's even more beautiful. Then you go bluff of Oh, great. You don't need bluff of mm. You go cleave. He dies. We take zero damage. We go for a bluff of blood. And we'd like to kill him in one turn. If we jacks, we can't. So we take jacks. We take some damage. It's fine. But we kill him. And that's all that matters. Killing him mitigates more damage for us in the future. I don't think I should take a flame berry, but I'm kind of tempted. My block is a little bit of a joke. Let's take a flame barrier. I'm, I've never taken flame barrier. I, oh, I, I just, I don't believe in it, man. The, the fact of the matter is, I truly just do not believe in a flame dagger and what it represents by the. Am I just gonna take five here? It's the, it's the least damage I can take. I'm doing it. It's fine. Jax it up. I think Jax is just always worth it. So if we Jax and offering, 
Oh, Blood for Blood Street. Jack's offering Blood for Blood Street. That's kind of great. If you think about it on a scale of 1 to 50, that's amazing. I'm not offering here. Take six more. Not sure if that's the right choice or not. I'll never know the answer to that. But I'm going to choose to believe it was the right choice. So we took four there. That's 52 incoming damage. That is a lot of damage. On a scale of 1 to 50, that's like a 99 on the damage scale. Not somewhere I wanted to be. I'm going to be honest with you guys. But uh, it is where we're at right now. 60 damage game have you looked at this and realized that that is way too much damage so i'm gonna pop the uppercut i'm gonna pop the this i'm gonna pop the spots of weakness which i should have probably done this turn earlier pop the drop kick pop the uh clothesline and then we're done okay. we took a lot of damage in this fight but it's a transient fight we had no choice we had no choice probably fuck yeah give it to me it might give me a kill condition what's this red scar i love it what's this uh no very easy choice what's this uh yes whatever whether that's the right choice or not i will never know it's one of those things we'll just never we have so little relics honestly if i'm being 100 percent honest with you and i'm gonna be 100 honest with you because you guys know i'm always 100 percent honest it's my thing right it's my thing be 100 percent honest and you have nothing to fear i feel like these relics are so little. I honestly don't know how we are even still in this. In all honesty, if I had to die on this fight right now, right here, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be like, you know what? You got me again. I had nothing. I had nothing. What was I supposed to do? The deck had nothing. Look at no relics. Zero relics. I can't kill someone. I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's kind of hard to kill someone when you have zero relics, okay? Relics make or break a Slayer's Fire Run. 100%. I don't care what anyone says. That's what I believe until the end of my life. Okay, I will not pop uh, off now. I don't think I need to pop off now, so I'll wait a turn. 27. I now would prefer to pop an offering. We do not have an offering, but had we had an offering. Oh, man. I would have popped that offering so hard. That offering wouldn't have stood a chance, baby. So we're taking 7, you know. We're losing our HP at a, a, a tremendous rate here. If I had to be honest, I think the biggest weakness in our deck right now is our uh, defense. On a scale of 1 to 10, I think we have zero defense. Not a good idea. I'm just going to put it out there right off the bat. I think, you know, you probably wanted some form of defense. Power through is defense. But can we play power through in other cards? Not really. Um, what do we want here? We can remove a card. Uh, like a basic strike what we have another shop coming up like immediately if we see nothing we like if we should just skip this one and go to the next shop i think we do secret technique is is kind of good we could go find the the struggle offs we could go find the spot the weakness when we need it we can go find uh the the jacks we need it we can find a lot of things um a lick a bronze potion is kind of good but uh you know what i think i'm gonna do here i'm just gonna say you know if i go this i'll heal 10 next at this next shop just give me the option to upgrade a card I could up. I mean, what do I even upgrade? There's nothing. I don't even want to upgrade anything. Oh my god, sucks. I would rather heal. Um, this will heal me for ten. It's just a, It's literally just gonna give me ten heal, just like that. Boom, ten heal. Next, next room. But as I said, I'm gonna heal up anyway. You know what? I think we think. I think we skip this and we go to the shop. What do you got for me? I'm not gonna lie to you, but Omori doesn't really help me in any way, shape, or form, Dick. Armaments, though. Does also really help me that much either. Another, we could go another one of those. Let's go like this. Boom, boom, boom. And uh, are we gonna combust five damage a turn? We take one. I don't think that's a safe bet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. So we got three respawns. We have three respawns <laughs> to beat the fucking time unit. Okay, that's all we got. This is the absolute worst opening hand we could have got. On a scale of one to absolute worst, this is like a twelve. I wanted to emulate here, but I don't want to put a burn card in deck right now. So that's going to make my Blood for Blood free right off the bat. Losing a quarter of my HP gauge on the first turn is not ideal. Obviously, we got all the cards we didn't want to see immediately after that. So that's six cards played. Uh, seven cards played. What am I looking for? Jacks, I guess. Eight cards played. And I'll end my turn here. I really wanted the Jacks, but I need... The thing is, this is what we needed, right? We needed jacks early. One, two, three, four. We needed jacks early 
and we needed spot weakness to my turns. So that's why we needed to win this. Without this, we weren't winning this. Like, we, I'm gonna be honest with you. Without it, we weren't winning this run, and we didn't get it. So, there's a very good chance we're not gonna win this run. We got one jacks out so far, which is really good. I will spot weakness. I will shrug it off. I will infernal blade, and it's a headbutt. I'm gonna put back the jacks. I think we are not dead here. I think we can, we probably no, we're actually fine. We're actually not doing bad at all. So we get the jacks again here. We're probably gonna die here, so we might as well go like all in here. Three cards. I can only play two. Mm. We actually don't die here yet. This is kind of good. That was kind of like a free jacks almost. One card. Two card. Okay, we're getting our strength up. And we're not dying, which is the big deal. Like, the fact that we're keeping ourselves alive for these three respawns. And we just keep upping our strength, upping our strength, upping our strength, upping our strength over and over and over is really good for us. I'm going to put Jax back. I think Jax is the better option here. I'm going to go Thunderclap and I'm going to go Dropkick and I'm going to get the Jax back. I'm going to play it immediately down to 4 HP. I will also use the Cleaves to kind of get him closer to what I'm hoping will be his, uh, his heal. Okay, so this is his heal. This is very important. Do that. Is there anything we want to draw? Not really. He is healing now. He's going to take all debuffs off. We're on 6 right now. So we could... If we play nothing here, we have 6. He's healing right now. We know he's healing right now. So let him heal for like 17 HP. I don't care, dude. Heal for 17 HP. It's fine. 33 incoming damage. You know that? That's technically a kill. But... I have a billion... Card draw. Or a billion turns. Uh, I mean, okay, we could potentially draw jacks, but I only have three turns next turn, three cards next turn. I think, I think we let him kill us. Kill me once, it's fine. Okay, first potion's back. Spot weakness was not what we needed specifically, but it's okay, we get to put a ton of vulnerable on him. Oh no, we could only play two cards there, I messed up. So 49 damage. That's actually not bad. I'm gonna jacks here, I'm gonna hurt myself. And I'm going to end my turn. And we're going to die now. We're coming back again. And as you can see, we are going to win. Give yourself three respawns. And you will apparently win a Slay the Spy Ascension Mode run. 1040. That's like a really low score. Ascension Mode level 30 unlock. Okay. So how to win Ascension Mode runs? Just take every single fucking respawn item you see. We died twice on that fight. And came back twice. And we still had one life left. We still have one life left. Proceed. Beautiful. Beautiful. I didn't expect that. That one caught me a little bit of God. That one caught me a little bit of God. I honestly didn't expect What's the thing with them? Poor bosses. We get no more money after beating bosses. Okay. Uh, one history. How do we win? Uh, oops. Nope. That's not one of the push. How do we win the Slay Spy one? I have nine relics, which is mind boggling little. I have guaranteed strength gain with the Iron Clap. Via Jax and. Kind of spot weakness, and then just have respawns. We had Lizard's Town, two fairies, and bottom. That's all we needed. And I, I made the right choice when I decided to sell the Gambler's Brew and buy that last fairy in a bottle. That that won us the game right there. This fairy in a bottle I bought here actually might have just won us the game. This fairy bottle, and where did I get the other fairy bottle? Because I had the other fairy bottle for a long time, dude. I had the other fairy bottle for I like what. I had this. I had the fairy bottle since this floor. Holy shit! Since second floor, halfway through, I had the other fairy bottle. So I kept that fairy bottle all the way through. I could have got rid of it for strength upgrade. Could have got rid of it for uh, uh, gamblers. But there was many options, but I chose to go for um, the the fairy bottle. It worked out. It worked out. We won. So I'm I'm very happy right now. Obviously. Uh, we are now going on to Ascension Mode Level 12 on the Silent, and uh, we are done with the Ascension Mode Level 12 on the, def uh, on the, on the, on the Ironclad. And then obviously we'll go to Ascension Mode Level 12 on the Defect Offices, but for next one, we'll be doing the Silent, Ascension Mode Level 12. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Slay the Spy. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to hit that like button and that subscribe button. This has been a long night for me. Four, five, four, five runs. I can't remember exactly. It's four, five runs to win. Um, it was painful. Was it six runs? It might have been six runs, actually, now that I think about it. 
It could have been six runs. It was a long night, but uh, we finally got the win, and we got the win with something I never expected. And I think that's the second time we've actually just used fairies in the bottles to get free wins. So played a little bit safer, played a little bit slower. Not slower, played fast, but I played safer, and it, it paid off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.